use this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, applied games in healthcare. Um, where's my pretty? Um, and I'm going to talk about chains and how you design chains. Um, I was afraid it wasn't working. Uh, so can someone um, go to the next slide, please? Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to the organization. Thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Jurian van Rijswijk. Next slide. Are you doing it? Yeah. Oh, then I can do it myself. Um, I'm an architect of applied games. Um, I design chains with games as a design principle. Um, I will tell you a little bit more that about that later. Um, I'm also the chairman of the Games for Health Euro Foundation. Um, the Games for Health Euro Foundation has three goals every year. Um, a conference in the field of medicine and games. Um, we build a European network of applied games and we will uh, have, we have a fund in which we invest in the development of applied games in healthcare. Um, this year's conference will be on 28th and 29th of October. If you want to have more information about it, uh, please take a look at the website gamesforhealthyourope.org. Um, if we, de we design games, we often use the model of uh, BG Fogg from Stanford who says if you want to change people's behavior, you need to put triggers in the path of uh, motivated people. Um, it's, so it's about m uh, motivation, it's about ability and it's about triggers and especially when, uh, when you need triggers, games are a very powerful tool to doing so and can be simple. Um, this is, I think, a very nice example of um, a game. Um, we all know that if people feel happy, um, they recover faster. And this is a children's hospital in London where um, the window washers got dressed as Spider-Man and the kids got stuck to the window um, feeling happy. Uh, will this change their behavior forever? No. Uh, you need to design something differently next week or the week after. Uh, so you can come up with uh, uh, Batman or even SpongeBob uh, or stuff like that. You can organize battles in front of the windows. Um, and can you imagine what will happen with the window washers? Um, they're not only window washers anymore. They uh, make children um, happier and uh, let them reco uh, recover faster. And Applied Games is a, has, a, has a wide domain. You can do it basically everywhere. Um, it's a, uh, you can do it for airlines, you can do it for hospitals, you can do it for shopping malls. And basically, if you take a look of from it from a distance, it's about um, creating loyalty or um, make loyalty you've already got, make it bigger, intenser, and reward, um, <laughs> reward. Enter a world where cities reduce traffic congestion. Before this is a very nice eyes. example of an applied game um, made by uh, IBM made for IBM, please blow this, lower the audio please, yes, thank you. Um, this is a game where 8,000 client cases uh, about supply chain management and business process improvement um, was designed in a model with a play layer on top of it where um, 325 uh, consultants from IBM do consultancy with uh, for their customers. 8,000 client cases. The nice thing of this is that um, we all know that uh, if you're going to implement um, supply chain or business process improvement, um, the, the practical side of it is different than theory. So th uh, the experience people got from uh, implementing supply chain management uh, was put back into the game. So this game gets smarter and smarter and smarter ev uh, day after day. Um, okay, I'm talking about healthcare here. Where and how can you imply, apply um, applied games in healthcare? Um, you, can, you can do it to train doctors. Um, every day, 750 people die in hospital uh, due to communication errors. Um, and we think it makes sense that if we want to train a pilot in an airline or an airplane, um, he should learn it first from a simulator. So why don't we um, organize that for healthcare also? And that's where we are active in. And thanks to this guy, James Rosser, 
Uh, he did a research among uh, surgeons who played games, and he discovered that they um, made 37% less mistakes if surgeons play games. Why? Because they got an improved eye-hand coordination. He also let his colleagues who didn't play games at all uh, start uh, playing games, and he discovered that after a while, 30% of them uh, made fewer er errors. So what will be the next question um, what will be the first question next time you will meet a surgeon to do surgery on your body? Do you play games? <laughs> uh, because he's probably capable of everything, um, except that you want to have him uh, good eye-hand coordination. Um, this is an experiment, it's in Dutch, excuse me, the red. Uh, this is an experiment um, <coughs> between uh, students and uh, gynecologists in training. The red are the, student of the, the students, and the blue are the gynecologists, gynecologists in training. And this study is carried out, a little study, small study, carried out by a gynecologist, where we uh, uh, developed an applied game for. And he discovered that students are better in gaming than gynecologists in training. Well, that doesn't surprise us. He also let them do surgery on the uh, uh, laparoscopic uh, simulator, and he discovered that they are also better in doing surgery. And I think that was a discovery for him. Why? Because they have a very good eye-hand coordination. Um, <coughs> and and uh, one of the outcomes of this study was uh, published by um, the British Journal of Surgery um, by uh, Maurice Graafland uh, and Marlies Schijven, so that surgeons really can improve their, uh, their skills. Uh, so back to the, to the applied games. Um, this is a game, I think it's a very nice example, where um, doctors who study geriatrics um, learn that it's not only important um, to act from a medical perspective, um, but also from a patient's perspective, uh, to, learn, to learn to listen to the wishes of patients, and especially for elderly. Um, you, you, you are able to talk with your patient um, who is, for example, 80 years old uh, with a life expectancy of one month. Does it make sense to give him a treatment of two years where his quality or her quality of life um, literally um, uh, diminish? Um, and and doctors, young doctors often don't think they're able to, t to discuss such issues with their patients. Um, but this game was initiated by the Radboud University. And um, the outcome of this game is also discussed with patients and discussed with other doctors to learn young doctors that it's very important to listen to your patient's wishes. Another interesting um, development is uh, an example a company called MyCognition. They're developing games right now um, uh, where they have, um, where they're going to try to slow down the processes of uh, Parkinson and Alzheimer um, with games like this. Um, this. These are games for kids. But the cognitive functions of, um, um, in this game, they literally know where cognitive functions or of people are, uh, are used and how they work. And it's discovered that people who play games create dopamine in a natural form. And dopamine is a relevant um, um, drug in your head to uh, slow down the process of, uh, of Parkinson and Alzheimer's. It's being studied right now. I'm, I'm looking forward to the outcome of it. Um, but there are also a lot of games um, in development right now for patients. Um, one of the most spectacular um, Domains, I think, for me as an architect is, is the, the example behind me. It's the high care unit or the isolating room uh, for people with mental illnesses. Um, it's important to, to get them relaxed as fast as possible instead of keeping them, keeping them there as long as you wish. Um, but it's basically, it's a disturbance of the therapy. So creating games for these spaces for me is, a, is, a, is quite a challenge. And there are also examples, not only in digital, digital form, but also in physical form. This is wooden toy, 
uh, where children, wooden toys where children learn um, about the treatment or the research that's carried out um, with them. And one of the outcomes of playing with literally your diagnose is that children uh, are not traumatized anymore uh, when they know what's, what's going to happen. Um, and I also love technology. This is, um, this is very simple technology, um, but I love to experiment with this. Uh, this is basically an iPad of a Segway for your iPad. Um, and when I saw this, I thought, finally I'm able to bring school to, uh, to a hospital where chronically ill children are treated. Um, and they literally can go to school with this device from their bed in hospital. Uh, and they can even go out when, the, when their friends are playing outside. And also for parents to go back in the evening when the, when the kids are uh, in the hospital and they are not able to, to go there. So I'm also a little bit of a techie guy and I, I love to experiment with this kind of technology. It's not about gaming, but it's, it's the entire field of it. Um, and maybe we have heard the research and the talks of Jane McConnell often. Um, she wrote a uh, New York bestseller. She had a couple of TED talks uh, talking about uh, reality is broken and we need game designers to fix it. Um, uh, I think one of the nicest examples of using uh, large uh, game communities um, uh, to solve real life problems because gamers are good in solving real life problems. No, they're good at solving problems. Um, and first it was in game. And nowadays uh, we use large group of people, large group of gamers um, to, to solve real life problems. And Folded is, I think, a uh, very spectacular example of it where um, uh, researchers from Stanford discovered a protein from, for a treatment of uh, HIV. Um, but, but on scale, the protein was this big and it needed to fit into a DNA structure, which is on scale this big. Um, and they knew it, it, they could fold it, but not how. And they needed 10,000 years of computer power um, to find that out. And they didn't have that time. So they gave um, this puzzle basically as a game to a large uh, audience of gamers. And within six weeks, um, they solved the puzzle. And the article or the, the outcome got published in Science, and Science needed to produce an, an extra magazine besides the, your original one, because all the gamers were mentioned as, um, as authors of the article. IOI, another, another project of MIT, where they mapped the brain and used game, game communities to, uh, to literally map the brain, um, because we, we simply don't know how our brain is mapped. And another example I like is uh, the Three Marine Lives, Lives campaign in, um, in London where uh, people themselves get organized and are able to do uh, randomized clinical trials uh, together with 10,000 people, which a normal, uh, which a pharmaceutical company is unable to do because it will be probably too expensive. And, our, and this is also a nice example of uh, how you can save life with games. We all probably know uh, Foursquare, you can check in on locations. Um, people die in buildings, this building for example, because we simply don't know where AADs are uh, located. Why do we know, why don't we know where these are located? Simply because it's uh, commercial, um, it's commercial data, so the, the suppliers of these machines are not willing to share where they um, put those AADs. So we, we use the crowd um, to let people know where all these AADs are located. Um, and unconsciousness, everybody who plays this game will know where AEDs are located. And we all know that if you know where an AED is located in your, in your daily life, at least 10, you will save someone's life once, once, your, once in your own life. And we, we, we are, this is a tool for us to collect data so uh, we can make an app if you're in a location where you're not familiar with, uh, you will be able to find an AED. And this is basically game technology, a gamification of healthcare, where we are able to use a large group of people, reward them for it, and uh, uh, in this case, saving lives. Um, can you stop this video, please? Um, back to the behavior, a little bit back. Oh, no. Can you, can you, 
at the beginning of the video, please. Go to the beginning of the video. Yes, thank you. Uh, back to the behavioral change model of BG Fog. You probably know this video. Um, this is the, um, the exit of a uh, subway in, um <coughs> in Stockholm. Um, the behavioral change model of BG Fox says if you want to change people's behavior, you need to put triggers in the path of motivated people. So what's the motivation of these people here? Um, they want to go up. Um, what's the ability? They must be able to walk or stand right up. What's the trigger to take the stairs? There's no trigger. So if you want to uh, people to take this, the chairs, uh, the stairs, sorry, you need to design it. And that's what they did here. Oh. Okay, um, so you can change people's behavior um, wi with design. Uh, finishing up, um, there are two games uh, for FDA approval, seeking FDA approval as a medicine in the United States. One is for schizophrenia, one is for ADHD. So within a couple of years, we will have the first games on the market which, uh, which are approved as a medicine. And if there are people interested for a talk, and that's when I'm wrapping up, uh, on the Games for Health Europe conference, please uh, find me afterwards this presentation, and I'm willing to um, to invite you for the conference and have a talk. Thank you very much. That's great.